any props that you need and um, everybody got a wall? Why don't we just start with legs up the wall? Breathe okay. and relax. Okay. So you, uh, and if you have props, if you have towels or pillows or things that you might want to use, I'll probably throw in a little deer later. Um, as we kind of move a little more relaxing, start with legs up, end in some deer and some nice relaxing things. And in between, we'll work on hips and shoulders. Okay, so I don't know if you can, yeah, y'all can see me. Just scoot up against the wall and find your way, feet up. Open up your chest, arms wide. Wiggle in, see if you can get your tailbone in nice, press against the wall. Feeling real safe and secure. I like to flex and point my feet. If you have a little um, something that feels like a weight or, you know, I don't know, something that has a couple of pounds of weight or a heavier pillow or something, if you want to set that up on your feet, just to get that additional grounding. You don't have to have yoga props. Nice if you do, but you can find lots of stuff. You can put a bag of pinto beans. One of those big bags that we're all going to the store and getting of dried beans so that <laughs> preparedness, right? <laughs> I've got so much dried beans. Well, I'm vegan, so I have, I have a lot of beans anyway at the house, but I would have loaded up on all the dried Foods, pasta. So just close your eyes and smile. Think about the silver linings of these times. Brings us closer to community, helps us realize really the importance of family, friends, community. And this online community is a huge part of what I'm grateful for too. I'm grateful for all of you. You're part of my community. We're all part of each other's sending family. So think about the blessings that always come, the silver linings that always come during challenging times. The best of humanity always rises during these times. And then bring your own personal intention into this. Taking deep breaths, feeling them go into your belly, filling your belly up with air oxygen and then release even more slowly just empty everything out and pause in between and bring more in feel it expanding the back of your lungs the largest surface area of the lungs is in our back feel the lungs pressing and expanding down against the floor grounding exhale and whatever your intention is, make sure that it fills you with peace, brings in mindfulness, releases uncertainty, let go of doubt. You know, God has this. We're children of God, creations of God from heaven. Following is a positive. We can follow, we can walk in light, or we can walk in darkness. It's our choice. Let's walk in light. Let's chase the good. Let's be contagious with positivity and compassion, starting with our bodies. Next breath, just bring your feet against the wall and let them slide down. Maybe your palms turn facing the ground and you do a little windshield wiper with the knees, just opening up the waist and the 
spine a little bit, rocking back and forth. And then open up your knees wide and let the feet drop down in the body. Kanasana against the wall. Maybe you put your hands back up. Maybe you bring them in your head. Take a nice stretch. And then maybe you have your elbows resting in your hands. Come up and just sort of rest on the knees. And the weight helps press the knees open against the wall. Enjoying a little body Kanasana here. So once you have a little pressure, make sure that you let your shoulders release and press against the mat. So don't keep the shoulders up. So you can, once you have a kind of a nice resting position on your knees with your hands, then just make sure that your shoulders roll back onto the mat. Inhale, lifting the chest up, creating lots of space in the lungs, bringing the oxygen again. Maybe now that your shoulders and your shoulder blades are pressed against the mat, you can gently press the knees open with the hands a little more. Stay with the breath. Few more breaths here. And then release the hands off the knees. Go ahead and open the arms up wide. Bring in a nice big breath, inhale, exhale, close the knees together, hug the knees into the chest, rock from side to side. Give me a nice massage to your back and your spine horizontally, and then roll over to whichever side you choose in fetal position for two breaths. Just cozy in here and relax, bringing peace in as we move into more deeper opening. Pressing the hands gently, rising up, and find yourself back on your mat. In staff pose. So legs out straight in staff, wiggling any flesh. Go ahead and move this. Make sure you feel your spine just straight, erect. Let's go ahead and bring our arms up and just really feel the core engage, the hips and the tailbone grounded on the mat, stretching up. Maybe flex and point your feet. Shoulders pressing down, reaching up. So reinforcing those positions when we're moving and flowing in yoga, we're doing sun A or some version of sun salutation. You're Shoulders are pressing down, but you're reaching up, feeling the energy coming around your spine, protecting your back. So let's just gently exhale, flex your feet, and hinge first before we fold. Warming up, so connecting hamstrings into sciatic nerves. A lot of long nerves here. We're hinging, just hanging out here. Making sure you've got a little navel action, pressing against. So don't bounce, just hold this hinge. So you're not folding yet, just feel the muscles warming up and stretching, hinging out straight. 
Make sure you've got your core working. Might want to even just activate the glutes here just for a second before we melt. It's warming up the muscles. A couple more breaths here. And if you have a pillow or a blanket on the fold where we're going to hold for the yin, might put it there and then exhale and melt. So now in the full yin, you're not tensing anything up, you're not constricting. So anything you need to do so that you can just relax and melt, that's when we get the fascia to work. Because fascia can't expand if you're constricting your muscles. It's a whole different thing. That's where the yang works. So we did a little warm up with the muscles. Now we just melt and breathe. We're gonna hold this for a couple of minutes. This is super good for the sciatic nerves. And those are really long nerves up and down your legs. They call the, the life nerve stretch. Washi Motonasana, forward, seated forward, forward. If you wanna bind or hold your feet, just make sure you're releasing, you're relaxing. Letting that fascia stretch and the muscles can expand into the fascia as it stretches. Think of it like a turn sack. You stretch it out and then the muscles get room to expand, to lengthen. Working the long muscles, that's the, one of the biggest benefits of yoga. Why so many athletes are, are doing yoga in addition to whatever other training they're doing because most other sports and short muscles, many different contact sports and so football, basketball runners, you name it, they're all doing yoga now. And their performances are just coming off the charts. See if you can sink in a little more for the last six or seven breaths. About the feet, stretch your brain up to your body, the health of your spine, the oxygen, and uh, any toxins increasing our immune system. Slowly with core coming up out of this. Good. Moving the props, rolling your shoulders up and around. Really feel the strength in here, straightening the back, maybe wiggling the legs a little, rocking back and forth if you want to bend your knees and do a little of the windshield wiper this way. This feels good. I always feel it kind of where you know, the hamstrings are the kind of. In the back of the glutes there, always where the sciatic nerves connect. Okay, so the next one we're going to work, we're going to do the bent legged forward fold. So bring the right leg in, put the heel all the way at the top, the heel kind of lock in at the top of the thigh all the way up, and then square the hips and straighten again. Feel that same action, core engaged, wrapping around the spine, get the pose right. Inhale, come all the way up. I like to flex my feet, press the shoulders down. So a lot of energy now as we prepare for this. We're going to fold again. I mean, not fold. First, we're going to hinge, and then we'll fold. So hinging forward. So feel the activation and breathe. Just getting this activation, getting this leg warm before you fold. Your leg will appreciate it. You may want to flex and point your foot just to Kind of wake up that leg. And then if you need a prop, if you need a blanket, whatever, because we're going to hold this for at least two minutes, then just fold here and relax and melt. And as you melt into this, it's, it's melting. It's, you know, everything doesn't just bleep, turn into 
you know, melted, right? So as the breaths continue, you'll find yourself sinking more. Don't force it. Don't push it. Just let yourself sink as it warms up as the expansion happens. Just let the muscles expand. Anything starts feeling a little painful, a little uh, tweaky, then just come lift out of it a little bit and hang out there, and then you can try release it back down. Everything has an ebb and flow, so sometimes we have to come back out of it just to readjust, just to let your body say it's okay. Okay, I'm not gonna push it too much. I know, I know a lot's going on, especially certain some sides of our bodies. We have to give a little more attention to if you push it, you get in trouble for a lot longer. Breathe here. Maybe your elbows reach the floor or your hands. You just relax. You want to add a little something to distract you, but also do something positive. You can take these little kind of pulses, the Kegel training, you know, to work on the pelvic floor. You can just tighten and then release and press out. If you're trying to, like, if you were urinating right and you stop it, tighten, just close all the holes, really squeeze, and then let go and push. Stop and tighten. And that's nice. It's a nice distraction and it's great work for the health of your pelvic floor. Let's take eight more breaths here. Gently, slowly with core, protecting yourself as you just slide your fingers, supporting yourself as you come up out of this. When you get to the top, straighten the spine, press the shoulders down, roll the chest out. <sighs> Bring the knee up. So you can stay here. We're going to do a nice little twist for a few seconds. Or you can bring the foot completely over. You could take, if this is your right leg, you can take your left hand, wrap it around and squeeze and twist. If you want a little more twist, you can do a goalpost arm and then take it around and twist all the way. So don't dump all the way into the back hand. Try to support yourself, holding yourself up on the twist and then supporting yourself with your back hand, but just don't dump all the way back. So try to keep straight an energetic arm with the twist and energetic arm behind you, looking behind you as far as it's comfortable with the challenge and roll your eyes. Give those eye muscles a nice little work here. Let's just hold this for a few seconds. Inhaling straight and exhaling twist and keep the core. Take 
Two more long breaths. Come back around. Good. Let's move into a shoelace on this side. So take the leg that's long and bring it in. That would be your left leg probably, right? And then the right on top. So just adjust here as you need. If you need to, any blankets to support yourself, just try to scoot. Try to be as balanced as you can. Your glutes, the mat. As, as you can. Every side is different and this can be challenging. If you feel any tweaking in the knees and back out of it, we can modify. So really wonderful hip openers. We're gonna work a lot on the hips and then we're gonna move into the shoulders. So let's inhale, bring the hands up, press the shoulders down, feel the energy in the core again as we straighten, just aligning everything. So we're, the right leg is on top. Let's bring down the arms down and bring the right hand underneath and eagle arms. So just coming through and resting in eagle arms. So we can move through while we're melting. So just let the hips melt into this pose. And then the eagle arms, you can bring them up. Let's just maybe we start there as we're melting with the hips, bringing the arms up, reaching up, feel the core. Stay with the breath. Feel the energetic arms, good. Watching you, we're good. A few breaths here and then we're gonna fold. So you can, you can pick various stages of, of folding because it can get a little more intense and I'll give you some options. So with the next exhale, just begin slowly folding forward, slowly. And if it gets too intense, you can unwind your arms and just fold and relax and melt. So I'm gonna unwind my arms and spider finger pressing my hips back on the mat. And then sliding the hands up. We're going to stay in the shoelace, though. So we're still working on the yin there. We're just going to slide fingers up, come back up straight. And now we're going to add a little shoulder work in this. So bring the right hand up over, and the left hand comes behind to meet it. This is where a lot of people like to use a strap. My right side can touch. My left side can't, and I just kind of lock my hand in. So if you have a towel or a strap or just finding a way to lock your hand in place on your back and reaching up if you can. Hold on to something or lock in and see if you can open your shoulders up. One side's easier. This side is much easier for me so I can actually touch and hold and see if you can open your shoulders up, bring the chest up, bring the oxygen in. And let's hold this for, let's just say we'll, we'll be in the last minute here. And then we'll come out of the whole pose. So as you're sinking in with your hips, just let them expand. Relax the hips. Open the chest. Don't lose the breath. See if the elbow can come out a little more, bringing the chest up. Good, Betsy. Nice adjustment. Nice, Joanne. Good. More seconds here. Three more nice long breaths. And 
gently when you're ready, just slowly letting go, releasing out of this, shaking the arms, and then begin to unwind the legs, bring them back forward for staff, shake them out. Yeah, maybe a little Marilyn Asana, right? <laughs> I'm subbing for Marilyn today, so hey Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe and Marilyn. <laughs> And then come back in staff, and we will take the left leg in. So, now and all the way up, moving toward the bend legged forward fold, Janyushir Shasana. Hands up, reaching up for the sky. Yes, we receive. Visualize yourself just being flooded with blessings and happiness. Bring in the core, straighten the spine, press the shoulders down. Nice inhale. Exhale, hinging. So here's where just make this active and then we'll melt. Just make this active. Fire it up, feel the energy in the muscles. Sometimes it's easier to relax and melt once we come from this fiery place. It's like, okay, I know that extreme. Now let's nice big inhale and then exhale. <sighs> just let it go and melt. Yeah. Complete relaxation, letting gravity and the pose do all the work. You want to flex and point your foot just to wiggle out a little more. Sometimes it helps the leg extend. And then inhale and melt some more. About eight more breaths. Last breath. Gently on your next inhale, just sliding fingers coming up slowly. Straight the spine. Maybe inhale, roll the shoulders up and down, pressing them down. Bring the knee up. Same thing the side if you want to cross the foot over. Straighten yourself, wiggle in. Make sure your tailbone's grounded. In, hugging your knee, or bending your arm with the elbows, wrapping it around. Inhale, straighten the spine, exhale, twist, and look, roll your eyes around. I don't know about you, but I always think this feels really good because we just don't exercise our eye muscles enough. We move our head, but we don't move our eyes, so this is a nice reminder. That the eye muscles are important and we will give them exercise. So just holding this one again for a few seconds. Feeling the energy in the muscles around the spine, lifting the spine up, protecting the spine. So when we do the twist and the movement, we never want to just crank the skeleton. When we crank the spine, you want to wrap the muscles and support it. So it lengthens things with the support of the muscles. Few more breaths here. Roll the eyes a little more. Good 
gently come around, back around, take the extended leg, bring it in, shoelace on this side. So this time the left leg will be on top, wiggle in, make sure you're all balanced. This side's a little easier for me, but the arms will not be. We'll start with the eagle arms. So take the left underneath, this time right is on top. Nice inhale, bring it up, straighten the spine, feel the hips tucking in just enough that the back is straight. You might feel it expand, extending the sacrum as we reach up here in this pose. And it feels really nice. Reach up a little more, feel the extension of the spine and the core. Wrap around, protecting in and exhale slowly, again forward, holding. Eagle arms, sinking in here, holding this at some point if you want to unwind and just melt more with your torso over the shoelace, yogi's choice. Again, every side is different. So melting here, but just try to keep your balance with your, your, your bones on the mat, tailbone connected. Butt cheeks on the mat. <laughs> Staying with the breath. Relax. You want to unwind and reach out and just sink in here. Another minute or half. Gravity do the work. Sinking, melting, returning to your intention. Maybe closing your eyes for the last few seconds of this. Just really listening to your breath, following your breath. Deep into your belly, deep through the lungs. When you're ready, gently coming up out of this. Good. Good. And now let's take um, the left arm this time over. This is the hard one, <laughs> my right shoulder. So I gotta you know, bring that right hand up and stick it. If this hurts, then we can modify. You can do another pose. You can do uh, clasping your hands behind, opening your shoulders. Just... So I'm not touching, but I've got my back hand. Lock back here. And then reach the ones I have a grip on here. Firm, I try to open up the shoulders, bring the elbows back, and open the chest, holding that. Mm -hmm, good. judgment, just giving love to this side, helping it open up more. Maybe four or five more breaths here. Lifting the chest up with the breath. Good, nice adjustment please. One more breath. Gently coming out of this. Take it out. I 
and line the legs. And then think about any wiggling you want to do, any windshield wiper. And then from here, we're going to do one more with the legs and hips. Let's just open up into a wide legged forward fold. I love this. And this always helps with the three legged dogs, the things when we're in regular yoga class, right? In our Friday class, Betsy, when you're lifting your leg up, if I do these, it, it gives me a better lift and I feel more control. So I just love this one. But we have to ease into it. So just slowly slide your hands out and begin melting here. Maybe your elbows come on the floor. Maybe you flex and point your feet. Kind of fun. Just and then you can hold them in a in a flex or a point. We're just just relax here. Let the opening happen on its own with the breath and with the pose. Sometimes I'll bring my hands in prayer to my forehead and remind myself of my intention. It's also a nice rest <laughs> supporting your head <laughs> on my thumbs together in prayer. Just let the opening and the release happen naturally. And as you feel more comfortable, more opening, maybe you want to come a little lower. Just find the next level where you can open up a wee bit more. Or stay where you are. Listen to your body. Instructors are just up here giving you guidelines, leading you in possibilities. The rest is all about you. I want to come more forward for the last four or five breaths. One more breath. And then sliding your hands, let's move over toward the left foot. And sliding over, torso down. Breathing into this. You have props, feel free to use props or just find a nice comfortable place. You rest your head on your arm, place your hands on the floor. You can hold your foot just. You keep a little core in this. So that as you twist, you have that support. So melting with the leg, but a little core. It's good. Let's take five more breaths here. Maybe sinking down a little more for the last couple of breaths. And before we come out of this, just bring the left hand on the inside, maybe rest it. Open the body up. So stay down in this fold. Open the body up and reach out with the arm. So a little different twist here. You're going to feel the ribs all the way across the right. Really expand. Super for the digestive system, right? We want that healthy digestive system, especially right now. It's great for the immune system. So that's good. Stretch the other core. Nice big inhale and then exhale, torso back down where you were and sweep to the center. You might just enjoy a little lower as we pause here. Like, oh, nice, I can go even lower. A little simple pause here in the center and then sweep over to the right to the other side, right leg. Same thing, twist, little core in this and relax that full leg and melt from top torso, turn down. And flex and point your foot just to kind of wiggle in. 
those muscles to chill out. It's okay. <laughs> and stay with the breath. The muscles need the oxygen. The brain needs the oxygen. The body, the whole body, the breath is like. Maybe melting in a little lower. Maybe resting your elbows on the floor, hands on the floor. We're binding, just exploring what feels good and helps you continue to relax and melt. Maybe four more breaths here. And then taking the right hand, bringing it on the inside, left hand comes up, opening your chest out, reaching, feel the expansion of the ribs now on the left side, really open up here. You may want to flex and point your feet too, reaching, enjoying this lovely opening for a couple of breaths. And then on your next exhale, turn your torso down, Oh, release down to to the center. And now see where you are. This is usually where I'm like, oh yeah. It's awesome. So just maybe one nice long breath and just see how your body melts in here as you completely stretch out. Maybe your hands reach out and touch your toes, engage your core. Inhale, bring it on up. Beautiful. And flip your hands, hands up in prayer. In gratitude, press the shoulders down, straighten up, feel the core, maybe tighten that kegel, reach. Exhale, release down, bring feet together and windshield wiper should feel real good. Lovely work. And let's just come into seated just as a, a transition and just do a little spinal flex here. It's nice on, we've done a lot of hip work, so this is just a nice little, it's good on the sacrum. It feels good rolling around the hips. It's a nice little massage. And then place your hands on your knees and do a nice little grind. These are some transition things that bring some peace and calmness and opening. And after you do a few times one way, then reverse. Ah, feel good on your hips, lower back. Yeah, yeah I know. Very relaxing. We gotta find little ways to maybe we'll add some self massage. Then coming back straight up into Sukhasana. Let's move into tabletop. Oh, maybe we'll find a little way to massage something in the next one. Since we can't get a massage, we can do some yoga and then self massage. Okay, tabletop. So you know what to do here. Any wiggling you want to do, we'll do some cats and cows. When you're ready, you want to turn your hips around and roll them. Feel super on the sacrum. And then just come into your cats and cows or cows and cats. The cat especially, really feel those glutes. You can tighten them up and feel the legs. So this, we've done a lot of hip work and some glute work. So that cat really, I like to just tighten up my glutes. It feels supportive. Okay, so we're gonna move into a little back bend. This is an intense back one, lift up. We're gonna do some panel. So, we're gonna do an easy one first, and then we'll, just for a couple of seconds, and then we'll try to hold it. Nice if we can hold it for, we'll try for almost a minute, but let's just go ahead and warm up in the camel. So opening up the chest, yoga pockets, get the core, really make sure the core is engaged for camel, because you want to protect that back, pressing the hips and the thighs forward, 
Don't clench the neck. So feel the neck expand out. Hips and thighs forward. Crunching the neck, those little bones don't like that. Long term, that could, that could give you some problems. So I have to be mindful of that because crunching, I get that problem, so. And come up out of this. Roll the shoulders back. If you want to do, shake out your hands before we go into one, we're going to hold it for just a little bit. You can place your toes up. If you want more extreme, you've got various degrees. You can do the yoga pockets or you could try to reach for your heels. Once you do, you'll lose a little of your hips when you do that. So then just once you have your balance, press the hips and thighs back forward. So get back into that position. Open your chest, lift it up. Make sure you've got core. Let the neck reach out. And just breathe here in Ustrasana, Camel. on the breath. Feel the chest lift. Five more breaths. Now it's the top five minutes to bring it your back. Make sure you don't lose your core. Press the hips forward, thighs forward. Two more breaths. Next one, slowly with the left core, gently, slowly coming up. That's very intense on your back, keep the core. Oh, straighten up and then sink down slowly. And then we're gonna move into child's pose for a counter. So I like to open my knees wide and gently, slowly slide into child. This is where a bolster or pillow is nice. And let's just take a little child's pose. Resting, bring in some nice restorative. You want to take one hand and massage your head or your neck, your shoulder with one hand, and then the other. It's melting here in child's pose. Really good work. Back bends are so important. It's like the eye muscles. We, we don't use them. We have a tendency just to go one way with our back and that's kind of punching forward the computer, the desk, the steering wheel. So we've got to counter it so we keep our posture. Quality of life is strong posture, strong back. We will rest there. flexible spine. And then gently coming back out of this, move uh, up, come back into tabletop, nice little wiggle again. It's still, it's been a week since I, I came back on the plane, right, for 12 hours from Turkey, trying to get home, that was scary. And uh, we're gonna thread the needle. So I'm still working through a lot of the tension. Inhale, bring that left arm all the way up. Feel the core, feel the stretch, reaching up, visualizing all the space, opening up in your chest with your lungs. Inhale, exhale, thread it through. Ha, oh, left hand slide through. Right hand reaches forward. Feel the left glands opening up under the armpits. Remember immune function, so getting those lymph nodes working, breast health, getting those muscles expanding. Feel the opening here as you melt and on to the neck.
Stay with the breath, the breath, move the oxygen through the lymph nodes. Opening up the muscles. Few more seconds here. Inhale, gently lifting your body up with core, sliding that top hand down as you simultaneously let the bottom slide across the mat, coming back with your hands flat as if you're in tabletop, but then bring that left hand back up, right, and stretch. So make it graceful, almost like we're, well, we are dancing with movement, so almost <laughs> we are. Coming back into tabletop, any wiggling you want to do is always encouraged. Next inhale, right hand comes up. Same thing this side. Reach up, expand the chest. Inhale, bring the breath in. Exhale, take that hand through. Slide the left hand up. Stretch, open up lymph nodes under the arm, lung pit, breast health. Bring in the oxygen. New system function. Boosting. Melt and Five more breaths. Inhale, gently come up, activate that core. Let that top hand slide down on the bottom of the mat. Gently comes across the mat. Inhale, bring it up, open up, reach. Exhale, come down. Any wiggling? Any cat cow? And let's just tuck our toes under and do just a little toe stretch in this. It's so healthy. I have a tendency to have toe cramps at night, and this definitely helps. I take magnesium, and I do this, and then I can get basically a pretty good night's rest. Except that I do get up three or four times to use the bathroom, but, you know. <laughs> right about the time you get a good night's rest, you got to wake up and use the bathroom, right? But the toe cramps, it's nice not to have those. So sinking in, just open. Betsy, you were you laughed. You you are you up and down at night? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. okay. And I, I know I should, but I'll always drink a glass of water before I go to bed. I know that doesn't help, but I feel Let's like just stay hydrated. Yeah, right? Exactly. And yeah, that probably be good. Couple more breaths. I know this is a tough one, but it's so good for you know, your feet. Everything is connected to your feet and hands. So this is reflexology. Okay, go ahead, come forward. Yay! Hallelujah! Tap the toes. All right. And let's just come forward into cobra. So we're gonna do a little cobra, a little tough one, and then we'll 
sink into space for the longer part. So hands in the chest, elbows straight up. Let's come up, low cobra, high cobra. Make sure you got your uh, core. Very, very important at the core on this. So whatever degree, you can even come in the heel if you like. Feet together, calves up, heels up. Bring that core in. Nice back bend. Let the shoulders sink down, open the chest up. Looking out. Stay with the breath. Like seal. Three more breaths here and we'll come down into Sphinx. Gently lowering down with your Sphinx. So keep the core of the chest. Hands by your chest, tuck your toes under, come up into tabletop. Maybe you do a cat, just hanging out in cat, wiggling back and forth, giving a nice counter. You want to go cow to cat. You want to open up your knees and come back into child's pose and wiggle, just bringing and back, back in, coming back through tabletop. And then the last one, we're going to do some pigeon, but let's go into a downward facing dog. We'll just do a couple minutes on each side of pigeon. Feel free to do it on your back, but if you want to do a downward facing dog first, toes back, pressing hands, inhale, exhale, come up, down facing dog, walk it out. So the legs should feel really good. We did a lot of work on legs and muscles. So this should feel really nice walking it out. You should find a beautiful downward facing dog. And let's just inhale with a three-legged dog with the right foot all the way up. Yeah, again, you should feel pretty open here after those. And just enjoy this nice stretch here. If you want to bend and stack and wiggle your foot around, just enjoy this. Bring the foot back up when you're ready and come forward into pigeon, finding whatever you need to go underneath that right hip, wiggling into this, inhale, pressing up, and do a little cascade once or twice, inhale, come back up, exhale, down, inhale one more time, exhale, melt onto the mat, Find your sleeping swan, or you can stay up a little bit if you don't want to sleep your swan. <laughs> you can find bolster. Just take a little nap for a minute and a half or so. A minute to three to five minutes is, is again, you get, uh, you get the benefit, the lasting benefit. So we want to stretch the fascia, it stays, stays kind of stretched out and the muscles keep expanding. So as you move through the other yoga practices and your gentle or your flow or 
whatever yang style, then you get the yin style and that stretches and creates that foundation that supports the more cardio, the more flowy stuff. We'll do six more breaths here. Melting. Inhale, coming up, supporting yourself, maybe reaching out with the left hand, bring it all the way around, opening the chest, tapping the back of the leg, or bring the foot up. If you want to try for mermaid, wiggling the foot in the arm, reaching out with the right arm, any variation of this begins bringing the balance toward the pose. Maybe next time you're here, 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 whatever, just gracefully come out of it, enjoy it, let the foot go down. Come back around with the arm, tuck the toe, lifting up, back up into three-legged dog, oh, bring that leg up, feels good. Anything you need to do, drop the leg down, then inhaling the other leg up, left leg up, stretching here, bend, stack, wiggle. three-legged dog, and then bring it forward. Finding your prop, beginning some cascades. Inhale, exhale, release down. Up. Down. Up and then belt all the way down. Hang out here for a minute. <laughs> really bring lots of oxygen into your body and sink. Feel the opening of the hip on the left side. These are second chakra when we're doing hip openers. The element is water. So feel like waters, rivers and streams, veins and arteries moving, opening, releasing emotions. Emotions are water, watery. A lot of times these poses will bring out the emotional response when we're in the second chakra. Couple more breaths here, as we're releasing it, letting that go. Next inhale, come all the way up. We're gonna try to play with the same thing on this side, reaching up and over. With the right hand, maybe taps the leg, brings the foot up. If this works, any degree of this, maybe you try to balance with the left hand out and around, finding the mermaid. Or some variation or movement, baby steps, as Jennifer always tells us. Just meet yourself where you are. Let the pose meet you where you are. Tuck the toe. Come on up. Bring the leg up. Stretch. <sighs> Release down. Walk it out. And then just come back down onto your knees and onto your back. We're going to find our way down to the mat for Shavasana. And if you want to just do a little rock and roll or side to side, you can rock and roll too, front and back, getting a vertical and a horizontal. And then just find your way melting, maybe take a nice big stretch. We're going to run over a couple of minutes, but finding your hands to your side, opening your legs, preparing yourself for just a little brief shavasana, then you can continue in it on your own at home when we close this class out, but just taking a few breaths, reminding yourself of the intention that you started with, reminding yourself that you 
are enough, that we've got this. Letting go of stress and finding the silver lining of blessings in everything and all things. Feeling the tingling, return to your fingers and toes, finding some wiggling. Inhale, bringing your hands up, stretching, feet point and flex. Full body stretch and bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a big hug. Thank yourself for showing up for your body, rocking from side to side and then over to whichever side you choose, fetal position. Just take a nice long breath here. And then gently, slowly place your hands supporting yourself, bringing yourself back up. And feel free to lay back down after we close this class out and take a longer shavasana, maybe make it a meditation. But Joanna and Betsy, thank you. It's always so nice having you in class and seeing you here. It's really, really good to be back home. Looking forward to having you in more classes. I'm gonna tell Jennifer, I'm just, I'm open to doing a lot online. It's, it helps me stay focused, yoga does. <laughs> Inhale, bring it on up. Connecting yourself in gratitude, feeling that spine once again, stretch up in peace. Hands to forehead, shanti. Shanti is peace, hands to heart, center, compassion. And let's just take an inhale and then we'll, on the exhale, just do a nice long om, shanti, shanti, shanti. Inhale. Om Shanti 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 Shanti. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, Betsy. Namaste, Jimin. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Ten o'clock.